Good, bro. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, so this is Huxton, uh, Huxton Barn Kitchen in London, and uh, I'm performing with, with two great guys called the Narcissist and Omar Fendom. And uh, yeah, man, those are great guys, and uh, you know, I have my EP coming up in like two weeks or so, so I'm really excited about just like, it's the first time performing the tracks. You know, it's good vibes, man. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, the first five years, I was kind of in like asylum centers, so I can't really remember too much from that. Um, uh, I mean, it was just—it's just a different country. It's kind of a small country, you know. It's, and, and, and the wave of immigrants, we were like—I think we were pretty much like the second generation, uh, or the second wave of immigrants that were coming into the country. So it was just not. It was a great country, you know, in terms of welfare and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, uh, the system is really good. Um, but it ain't, it's not like the most diverse place in the world, you know. Uh, but I got into uh, I got into some music and like break dancing when I was I must have been like ten or something, you know. So so real early. Uh, yeah, it was it was soccer first, then it was break dancing, and then it was rapping, and you know uh, I quit school fairly early on as well, like when I was fifteen or sixteen when I got my deal. Yeah, I quit school and. Uh, I just uh, lived the music life ever since, and I haven't really. I think I moved away from there. Nineteen, something, nineteen or twenty. I've been living in like Paris and in London since. Yeah, I, I got an artist development deal because you know that was that was back then. <laughs> it was it was crazy. It was really crazy because I was actually playing mostly soccer back then, and I had this cousin. Um, and she knew someone who was kind of getting his, his, his company up and started and, and he and he saw me and and, uh, and when it took off for him and we have been making music and when he kind of got his situation set up he would bring me along so I would have my mother come with me and sign the papers and, you know like a little boy 13 14 years old it was great man I was lucky in that sense yeah I was big on soccer I thought I, was, I, thought I was gonna be Ronaldo you know uh, I had that gap in the teeth, and like I was like, "Oh, I'm Ronaldo." Uh, but yeah, I kind of do from time to time, but you no, know, nah, not not too much. I can't watch it anymore. Uh, I don't know. I just don't have the patience. Nah, not even that. I mean, sometimes I still, you know, you kind of like as a kid, you have those visions of you like scoring the craziest goals and stuff, but. You know, I don't know, I just don't think I have the patience to kind of sit through it, you know, I have to appreciate it. Ooh. Okay, so you did your research. Yeah. You did your good. research. So success. Success, I think, yeah, success. That was like, a, I think it was 12 records. It was an album. Um, but because I was developing so rapidly at that stage, uh, I was I was like, as soon as it came out, I didn't want it to come out. Yeah. So I don't think that many people have it. Exactly. I think we pressed up like like fifty or hundred and kind of passed it out, and right after that, like there was so much, so much like I was coming better so fast. Uh, it was because you know it was a little city where I was living in at that point. And it was just me and my homeboy. We were doing our thing, and you know, it, it went so fast for us. Like, and, and when you're in that small of a city, obviously everything is kind of kind of relative. And we just felt like freaking rock stars. So we were like, oh, this is changing us, you know. And yeah. you know, success is bad. We're not working as much. We just want to, you know, hang out and be with women all the time. So we, we were talking about making the like portraying the flip side of the coin. But yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it's funny, you know. Yeah, so, so Static, <clears throat> Static was like the hip-hop god in Aarhus, you know, 
you know, and I'll go up to him whenever they like every time there was a big American act in town, he would be the DJ. So I'll go up, I'll give him the CD. Uh, one day he called me, and uh, him and Noise, who was also you know one DMC, so big deal as well. Uh, used to DJ together, and and one time we were just doing. I think they had been out and they had got uh, Nat Ill and Spliff to kind of spit a verse. And they asked me to come through and they did it. And, uh, and from then on, things went crazy fast. I was supporting Common. And uh, we kind of announced the whole thing there. I brought them up like a surprise thing that was crazy, man, you know, just to be that young and to kind of have that experience. Like 2,000 people and like, the introduction of that and the project did really well. Yeah, I learned so much from those guys. Man. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I was, yeah, man. I was, I was so. How you say it? Like I was such a Nazi with lyrics. You know, I was just like Talib Kweli, Most Def, Lauren Hill. You know, these were just the guys that I was looking to. You know, uh, so I'm so happy to say that. Man. I was really working hard on my lyrics that too. I think because um, initially it was only distributed in Scandinavia. Um, and you know, it was 2009, so it was still like a bit back. It didn't have distribution here. It got digital, uh, digital distribution in the US. And, uh, and I, think, I think that's why, basically. So, you know, you might find a, like a little like a torrent somewhere, or, like something, you know, at some point you might, you might find some tracks on YouTube. But, I think it's just because it was, it was 2009, and it was it was a very physical thing. Still, you know, a lot. I know a lot of people will have it on vinyl and like on CD and stuff. You know, so I think that's why it's so hard to find. That was interesting, man. That was that was that was a great time. I have a friend over there who, had, who runs his own label called Raw Poetics, and he invited me over there. Um, I think one of the first days we went in with Phil the Agony. Great guy, man. Great guy. And, you know, they took took good care of us. And I think we ended up doing two tracks or so. Uh, Crondon was there as well. Um, yeah, man, they were playing me all types of stuff there. I think he was doing a, a, an album with Mad Lib at that point. So he was playing me all of the Mad Lib stuff. And, you know, Khalil, DJ Khalil was right next door. So he would pop in and like just, just just being there watching that and you know, kind of like sucking up that atmosphere, you know. Yeah. That's 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 done me well since. Yeah. Um, so the exaggeration was actually like the follow up, the first follow up that I had been working on. Um, and um, I don't know, I think at, at one point, you know, I kind of, at, at some point in the process, it just kind of transitioned. You know, I was in, I was in France and I kind of got, uh, started working with, uh, with a big DJ over there and like the sound and the vibe of the project kind of started to shift. And I was like, I think I was already like a year in at that point. So uh, I, I kind of like did the, get, like the Ghetto Pop Fridays, ain't it? Where I would put, the, I would just throw like I think it was like 15 tracks from the Exaggeration album, and I just didn't put it out like an album, uh, and, and just gave it out free and like uploaded a track each week until the Ghetto Pop album came out. So, so yeah, it's kind of like sc scattered out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not good, that's not good. Tell that to many. It was right when we landed. As soon as we got here. As soon as we got here. There was some of it. I think I think there was one or two of the tracks. Uh, I think there were six tracks on it. I think four of them on them. Three or four of them. And um I think we just did it kind of like to compile something. 
uh, we met uh, Eddie from Soul Culture as soon as we got over here, and he was like, let's do something like that. Um, it came out and we did like Love Box and did like a few shows off it, and you know, it seemed pretty cool. It was like the introduction. Eh? I think I think like you were saying, you know, it just, it's been a moment since I kind of told my personal story, and it was just in a different place of the world, ain't it? So I kind of felt like um, uh, I just really wanted to do something that was really condensed down, to just be like, you know, to tell people something in a very short amount of time, and, and just to give them my past as well, because you know, I I kind of like undermine that a little bit because you know it's just my story ain't it but to other people it's kind of like that's crazy you know and that's where you come from and you know you need you need you need to let people know that i just uh, i think it was just about really reconnecting with who i am like as an artist you kind of you know you experiment you go from place to place to place and you just kind of get all over the place which is super necessary because that's what's going to make you unique at the end of the day ain't it you have all of those components you know and i have that like that desire to experiment all the time you know? i just kind of felt like Bringing it home, um, you know, and letting know, letting people know because I have moved to London, you know, that this is my story, you know, this is Nick Ash, and, yeah. I think I think uh, you know, uh, growing up in Denmark, so there wasn't a lot of diversity like we were talking about before, ain't it? So, you know, your friends and who you would deal with on a daily basis, you always felt like you had to compromise or be someone else in order to kind of fit in that setting. When you were at home, you know, your family couldn't understand that, you know, you know, there's a two-sided thing, you know, you have to coexist between those things. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's also what makes a person unique, but at the same time, it gives you that rootlessness. You know, you, you don't you don't fit in anywhere. You know, uh, I think I think that's the big thing about it. You know, especially like having having a, like my you know my background is Muslim. My parents are Muslim. You know what I mean? And, and if you want, if you're gonna coexist in like a Western society and stuff, you know, there's certain things you just can't do. And, uh, and, I, and, and you know what I mean exactly. So. And then here, you know, people are going to say to me, oh, well, you have an American accent. Are you American? No, but I was raised in Delaware, you know. So, so people are always going to say, oh, you don't fit in here, you don't fit in here, you don't fit in here, which doesn't necessarily bother me because I'm accustomed to it, you know, that's my personality. Uh, it's just people are going to try and box you. That's what I love about it. That's what I love about it too. That's 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 why I came here. That's why I've like stayed here, you know, because it's, you, know, you don't get that. So, so. I, f I feel like you know. Also, when I was younger, it was yeah, man. You're more like okay. This is like I was real hip hop. You know, it was like real hip hop. It was just it had to be underground. You know, by any means. You know what I mean. Then you grow up, it's just like, wow, the reason why you fell in love with music is just, you know, it's universal. It's something we can share, you know, it's something that we can all agree on. It's something that's going to make us all feel good. And it's not something that's, you know, based on genre or where you're from or, you know, it's, it's there to break down those barriers, ain't it? Like, that's why I love it, ain't it? You know, and I, I think you kind of go back to your basics, you know, as you grow older, you kind of, kind of understand that. Yeah. Say what you got. Say, say what you got. Well, I got up, a bad liver, a broken heart, blood just to be alone, heart. Ring, ring, ring the alarm. We more ambitious than falling apart. You said I need a council since high school. Look, I don't need shrinks to know why you're psycho. My pops never cared, mom's never understood. That if you ain't in the hot, well then you get your shot. So I'm living lawless, mixing with godless. Niggas is heartless, we you for violence. Second minutes and hours, weapons visit the power. Till I'm hitting them towers. Till I'm risen the power. Until the billions is ours. Until the bitches is ours. Till I'm 
Don't tell I'm sicker than Rhino. Don't tell I'm sicker than Pyro. Still I'm richer than Lionel. Put your hands up, y'all. Yeah. Get in the car. Let's go, ring.